Hello, my name is Gloria Casas, and I am a PhD student under Dr. Stein in the Monogastric Nutrition Laboratory at the University of Illinois. In this presentation, I will summarize the results of the experiments that we have conducted to determine the nutritional value of rice coproducts in pigs. To start, I will talk about rice and rice processing. Then I will show the composition of the most common rice coproducts, focusing on carbohydrate composition. Then I will move on to present the result of digestibility experiment, and I will conclude by talking about the effect of including rice coproducts in diet effect to pigs. The first question that we had when we started this project was if rice and rice coproducts were relevant for animal feeding. We learned that rice is the main staple food for more than 3.5 billion people in the world, mainly in developing countries, and rice cultivation takes up more than 500 million hectares of arable land around the world. According to FAO and USDA, the production of paddy rice, which is the rice at it is harvest, was 756 million metric tons in 2017. That means that rice is the second most produced grain after corn. However, since the rice is processed, the meal rice available for human consumption was 489 million metric tons, which means that there were about 267 million tons of rice coproducts potentially available for animal feeding. Processing of paddy rice is necessary to obtain white rice for human consumption and in general involves four main steps, drying, the hauling, milling, and sizing. Drying is an important step. Paddy rice is dry until contains 12 to 14 percent of humidity. The next step is to remove the hull from the paddy rice to obtain brown rice and hulls, which represent 20 percent of the total weight of the grain. Brown rice is milled to obtain white rice. In this process, the bran is removed from the grain. This fraction is the aleronal layer of the rice, but also may contain endosperm and germ, and it represents around 10% of the grain. It is possible to obtain the fatter rice bran when full fat rice bran is processed to obtain rice oil, which is used also for human consumption or in the cosmetic industry. White rice is classified by size and grains that are less than 25% of the total length of the grain or are broken or damaged by insects are classified as a broken rice. Also, rice meal feed can obtain it by mixing fraction of rice hulls with rice bran. However, rice meal feed is mainly used in ruminant feeding, but is also potentially used for sows. Now let's talk about the composition of rice coproducts. In rice processing, different structures of the grain are removed in each step. The fraction obtaining as coproducts have different chemical composition. Therefore, the objective of the first section of this research was to determine the carbohydrate composition of five rice coproducts. Samples of brown rice, broken rice, full fat rice bran, defatted rice bran, and rice meal feed were analyzed for starch and fiber fraction. In this graph, they are represented in yellow, gray, green, red, and blue bar respectively. The content of starch was around 80 to 88% in brown rice and broken rice, which makes sense because this fraction is mainly endosperm. And the concentration of NDF and ADF were greater in rice meal feed, about 5%, and in full fat rice bran and the fatter rice bran, 17 and 25% respectively. However, this analysis provides limited information about the carbohydrate composition and properties of the fiber in these coproducts. For this reason, the carbohydrate composition of each ingredient was analyzed using a three-step procedure in which total non-starch polysaccharides, insoluble non-starch polysaccharides, and non-cellulosic polysaccharides were determined 
and the monosaccharide concentration in each fraction was measured. The results of this analysis are shown in this graph. Here we have the concentration of soluble non-cellulosic polysaccharides in soluble non-cellulosic polysaccharides, cellulose, and glyxoid lignin. This analysis shows that the rice coproducts have low concentration of soluble fiber, but except for rice milk feed, they contain more insoluble non-cellulosic polysaccharides than cellulose. Now, if we check the monosaccharide composition of the insoluble non-cellulosic fraction, xylose and arabinose are the main monosaccharides, but the concentration among these ingredients varies. Rice milk feed contains more silos than arabinose, whereas full fat rice bran and defatted rice bran contain approximately the same amount. This is confirmed in the arabinose to silos ratio and indicates that the arabinosilans in rice milk feed may have different structures and probably are less soluble than arabinosilans in rice bran. The composition of nutrients in rice coproducts indicates that rice coproducts may be used in diet for pigs, but the concentration of fiber may affect the utilization of other nutrients. That brings us to the next section in which the digestibility of amino acid, phosphorus, and energy was determined. In the first digestibility experiment, the objective was to determine the standardized ileal digestibility of crude protein and amino acids in two sources of full fat rice bran, one source of the fatted rice bran and broken rice. The main results of these experiments are described in the next two graphs. Here, the blue bar represents broken rice, red and green represent the two sources of full fat rice bran and the purple bar represents the fatted rice bran. The standardized ileal digestibility of crude protein, lysine, methionine, threonine, and tryptophan was greater in broken rice than in the other ingredients. The SID of crude protein, lysine, and methionine was greater in source 1 of full fat rice bran than in source 2 or the fatted rice bran. However, because of the concentration of crude protein in full fat rice bran and the fatted rice bran, the concentration of digestible amino acid was greater in the fatted rice bran compared with broken rice or full fat rice bran. Now let's discuss the content of phosphorus in rice coproducts and the effect of phytase on the digestibility of phosphorus. This graph shows the concentration of phosphorus in different plant ingredients used in diet for pigs. We can observe that rice bran contains the greatest concentration of phosphorus, which may range between 1.7 and 2.5%. Now let's compare with other rice coproducts. Full fat and the fatted rice bran contain greater concentration of phosphorus than the other coproducts, and that is because most of phosphorus in the grain is concentrated in the outer layer of the grain and in the germ. However, 90% of the phosphorus in rice bran is bound to phytate, which means that it's not available for the pigs. The second digestibility experiment was designed to test the hypothesis that the digestibility of phosphorus is improved if phytase is added to the diet. Results of this experiment are described in the next graph. Here, the orange bar represents the digestibility of phosphorus when phytase was not added, and blue bar represents the digestibility of phosphorus when phytase was added. The first thing that we observed was that the standardized total tract digestibility of phosphorus in broken rice was greater than in the other rice coproducts, and was not affected by the addition of phytase. Second, the standardized total tract digestibility of phosphorus when no phytase was added to the diet ranged between 26 and 33%. But when phytase was added to the diet, the digestibility of phosphorus increased up to 66% in brown rice and up to 40 and 46% in full fat rice bran and rice milk feed respectively, which means 
that phytase was able to release the phosphorus bound to phytate in these ingredients. In consequence, the concentration of digestible phosphorus increased in all the ingredients but was greater in full-fat rice bran and fatted rice bran, which indicates that these ingredients are an important source of phosphorus if they are included in the diets for pigs. Moving on to the energy digestibility studies, in the third experiment, winning pigs were used to test the effects of silence on total tract digestibility of gross energy and nutrients and to determine the concentration of digestible and metabolizable energy with and without added silence. Our data showed that silence did not increase the apparent total tract digestibility of dry matter, organic matter, or gross energy. It did increase the ATT of NDF, but only in full fat rice bran. This chart shows the concentration of metabolizable energy in the four rice coproducts used in this experiment. Results with of silence are represented by the orange bar and with silence the blue bars. The concentration of metabolizable energy in full fat rice bran and the fatter rice bran increased when silence was added to the diets, but addition of silence did not affect the concentration of metabolizable energy in brown rice and broken rice, which makes sense because these ingredients contain more starch and less arabino silence. Now, let's talk about digestibility of energy and nutrients in sows and growing gills. Previous data have shown that digestibility of nutrients by sows fed at restricted levels of feed intake is greater than in growing pigs fed at libitum. But in those experiments, there was a confounding effect of the feed intake. For this experiment, the objective was to compare the physiological stages of sows and growing gills and also to test the hypothesis that the feed intake does not affect the ATTD of gross energy or other nutrients. In this experiment, we had 48 gestating sows which were fed at two feed intake levels, 3.5 times the requirement of metabolizable energy, which is close to ad libitum feed intake, and 1.5 times the requirement, which is the feed intake used in commercial farms. We also had 24 growing gills that were fed at 3.5 times the metabolizable energy requirement, so we were able to compare sows and gills fed close to ad libitum feed intake. Here we have the result for this experiment. This graph shows the ATTD of GE and NTF for full fat rice bran and the fatter rice bran in gestating sows fed at two levels of feed intake. 3.5 times the metabolizable energy requirement in orange and 1.5 in blue. What we can see here is that first, the ATTD of GE and NDF was greater in full fat rice bran than in the fatter rice bran, no matter the feed intake level. Second, we observed that the level of feed intake did not affect the ATTD of GE or NDF. Likewise, Neither the concentration of digestible or metabolizable energy was affected by the intake level, but both were greater in full fat rice bran. When we compare gestating sows with growing gills, the concentration of metabolizable energy in the ingredients were greater when they were fed to gestating sows. But interestingly, the ATTD of NDA was not affected by the physiological stage. This data suggests that the energy and nutrient digestibility values estimated in growing girls shouldn't be used in gestating cells. Now we will move on to the last part of this presentation, which is focused on the effects of inclusion of full fat or the fatty rice bran in diets for winning pigs and growing finishing pigs. Previous studies have demonstrated that some of components in rice bran may act as substrates for commensal bacteria and indicate that rice bran may help to reduce the pro-inflammatory cytokines in mice. However, 
there is not enough information about this effect in pigs or about the effects of including rice bran on growth performance or meat quality of the pigs. Therefore, we conducted two additional experiments. In the first one, the objective was to determine the effects of including silenes on growth performance and blood characteristics of winning pigs. In this experiment, there were 532 pigs of 9.3 kilograms of initial body weight and 5 weeks old. The pigs were fed for 23 days. Pigs were allowed to 14 diets. One basal diet, three diets containing 10, 20, or 30% of full-fat rice bran, and three diets containing 10, 20, and 30% of the fatted rice bran with and without silenes. Weights were recorded to evaluate the growth performance and plasma samples were taken at the end of the experiment to measure the concentration of immunoglobulin A and TNF-alpha. Here are the results of this experiment. There were no interaction between silenes and ingredients, therefore I will present the result of the main effects separately. This graph shows the effects of silenes on growth performance variables. The orange bar represents diet without silenes and the blue bar represents values with silenes. We can observe that silenes did not affect the growth performance of winning pigs. The lack of effect of silenes on growth performance of the pigs that was observed in this experiment may be a consequence of too low inclusion rates of full fat rice bran and fatter rice bran, and therefore not enough substrate for the enzyme. Likewise, it is possible that the energy release from diets containing full fat rice bran or the fatted rice bran with silenes was not used with the same efficiency as other nutrients in the diets. Now, looking at the effects of full fat or the fatted rice bran, average daily feed intake decreased linearly as the inclusion of full fat rice bran increased in the diets, and there was a tendency for reduced average daily feed intake as the concentration of the fatty rice bran increase in the diets. Pigs fed diets containing the fatty rice bran had greater average daily feed intake than pigs fed diets containing full fat rice bran. Here we observe a quadratic effect for average daily gain, which increased up to 10% and then decreased as the concentration of full fat rice bran increased. But the average daily gain at 20% was similar to the basal diet, and this was also the case when the concentration of the fatty rice bran increased in the diets. The gain to feed ratio was not affected by the inclusion of the fatty rice bran, but it was increased as the inclusion of full fat rice bran increased in the diets. The gain to feed ratio was greater in pigs fed diets containing full fat rice bran than in pigs fed diets containing the fatty rice bran. Concentration of immunoglobulin A and TNF-alpha were measured in the plasma of the pigs to evaluate the effects on immune response. No effect of inclusion of full fat rice bran or the fatty rice bran were observed on concentration of immunoglobulin A. But we observe a tendency for decreasing concentration of TNF-alpha in plasma in pig-fed diets with increasing concentration of full-fat rice bran, which may indicate a reduction in inflammatory response. Moving on to the growing finishing performance study, the objective was to test the hypothesis that increasing inclusion of Full fat or the fatty rice bran is not detrimental to growth performance or carcass and fat quality of growing finishing pigs. In this experiment, we had 224 pigs of 28 kilograms that were fed for 97 days using a three phase feeding program. Dietary treatment consists, as in the winning study, of a basal diet based on corn and soybean meal and three diets containing 10, 20, and 30% of full fat rice bran, and three diets containing 10, 20, and 30% of the fatty rice bran. At the end of the period, one pig per pen was slaughtered and carcass 
mid and fat quality were evaluated. This graph shows the result for the overall period. Again, full fat rice bran is represented in orange and the fatter rice bran is represented in blue bars. We observe that increasing levels of full fat rice bran reduce the feed intake, whereas increasing levels of the fatter rice bran increase the feed intake. The average daily gain was not affected by the inclusion of full fat rice bran or the fatter rice bran, whereas the gain to feed ratio was increased by the inclusion of full fat rice bran but reduced when the fatter rice bran was included in the diets. Let's look now at the results for carcass characteristic meat and fat quality. Our data indicate that there were no effects of inclusion of full fat rice bran or the fatter rice bran on carcass characteristic or meat quality. To evaluate the fat quality, samples of adipose tissue from the belly were analyzed for the concentration of fatty acid and iodine values were calculated. The iodine values increase as concentration of full fat rice bran increase in the diets, which is explained by the greater concentration of unsaturated fatty acid in full fat rice bran. In contrast, the iodine values were not affected by increased inclusion levels of the fatty rice bran. This indicates that fat quality from pigs fed diets containing full fat rice bran may be affected. So, to conclude this presentation, let me recap the main findings of this research. Full fat and fatter rice bran are available to be included in diet for pigs. Full fat and fatter rice bran provide greater amount of digestible amino acid than broken rice. Inclusion of phytates in diets containing full fat or the fatter rice bran increase the availability of phosphorus. Full fat and the fatter rice bran may be included at 20% in diets for winning pigs without an effect on growth performance. Inclusion up to 30% of full fat rice bran in diets for growing pigs reduced the average daily feed intake but did not affect the average daily gain or the gain to feed ratio. But inclusion of full fat rice bran in diet for pigs may affect the fat quality in growing and finishing pigs. Inclusion of full fat rice bran or the fatter rice bran did not affect the carcass characteristic or meat quality. Thank you for your attention and if you need more information, please visit our website nutrition.nsci.illinois.edu.